Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to the episode of our Legendary Junjiang campaign. We pick things up for episode 16 from turn 73 in the winter season of 208. So, the Three Kingdoms has commenced, and it's us, the Tai Dominion, Liu Bei with the Kingdom of Shu Han, and Yuan Shao with the Kingdom of Song. And the good thing about this is because they were in a vassal and master relationship, so they split and automatically go into war, which means we can use our mercenary contract to take advantage of the situation by tying down Yuan Shao with us for 20 turns while we get to wipe out Liu Bei during this time period. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we kick things off with a battle in Xiapi, very tough battle. And uh, we had our fun, we used you know suicidal units here. And we realized a few things, like our poison, uh, oh not a poison unit, I mean for let's say Luo Jun who can't get poison arrows or fire arrows. These units are going to fall off quite a bit um, because they are just very weak, uh, they're very basic, they're very utility units, they can do a little bit of everything, a little bit of range, a little bit of shield breaking, stay stealth, pretty tough in the siege battle though to stay stealth. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to replace this whole retinue and go with something that the bandit faction typically used in the late game and that is the spam of protector of heavens because there is just nothing better than these units in the late game for the bandit factions and you can get unlimited supply of them so that's what we're gonna do um, we're still gonna have invisible suicide units under gunning though because uh, he doesn't synergize that well with spear units to begin with uh, nor does he synergize well with these range units but we're gonna keep them on him for now um, this is fine they just need levels we'll get there eventually right now we can try to help her boost a little bit with items but we don't have much. She needs one, two, three levels uh, to really make a difference. We could technically, her name is what? Gui, okay, so I could make her administrator here and that's a really easy way to give her levels because we have money. So she comes in here, we fix everything up. Oh, these are perfect buildings. Oh, because we built them, right? We traded to him afterward. Okay, so we're gonna just, you know, artificially level that up. We can go a little cheaper if we have the assignment, which we don't actually have another Sentinel, because I think we put them all as administrators or underlings. Huh, that's the case. Maybe we just keep it empty. Mustering's too late. Oh, actually, two turns, but we gotta keep fighting. Mm, what we can do here, because their levels are not that high, like if we if we look at the recruitment, we get level. Okay, we have to check on these. If I do a flip, level three. So basically, we're losing a couple level here, but mainly just a few levels here if we do a swap. So what we can do here is like swap away to um, something cheap. Obviously, we're gonna save money here. Oh, we got more Xiongnu cavalry. Hmm, tempted. This will become a very traditional army if we go that route. I like the invisible suicide unit though. Okay, so we're just gonna do standard archers. Because I don't want to wait two turns just to get the unit starting to replenish. With money, you can do something like this. You do lose the rank, so there is a punishment on this. But this way, we can get them back quicker. And we can continue to move on to attack Liu Bei. Now, we probably should have moved out and did the loot thing. Okay, mustering is only 14%, so we'll still be net positive, even though we would have been a lot more positive if we kept the... Yeah, we, we got the water wrong. I mean, if you're really rich, which we are, we could just cycle it again and get mustering back. But it's two turns regardless, so it's fine. It's not going to be a one turn thing. You guys. Not enough movement because we have way too much loot. So... Why don't we split, y'all? Just to get a merge. So that the supply can be low for next turn. Perfect. Um, yeah, whoever's highest level can lead. Best capture rate, even though there's really nothing to capture here. So they're pressing down. 
we're keeping them in defensive position here. They're not going to budge. Although Yuan Shao is not going to fight us. I'm not sure about Cao Cao. He might butt in here. Okay, we can no longer drop loot. But if we can, I think we can reach Nanyang. Ooh, okay, so if we can't... There's a trick here that someone has mentioned in another comment a few episodes ago. Is that you want to ditch your siege weapons. And then you get more movement. And then you have your siege weapons show up on March to merge before the battle. So let's see how we do that. We can siege. It'll come in as reinforcements. So it'll just be a slow siege. Yeah, that works. So pop them out. They should have gained some movement. Uh, not enough, though. Not enough. Oh, in that case, we messed up our loot really, really badly. We gain more loot in enemy territory, so I'm not worried. The winter loot situation is going to be fine. No one's here, huh? We could raid. I don't want loot. We're going to ambush. Okay, we're not going to drop to zero. We can take that next turn. And let's see, what else do we have? We have Bibu still pushing down south. He can push through next turn. Most of these will get a heal. Yeah. What about this army down here? Okay, we're wiping out Huaxin soon. That's also going well. Give a heal. Oh, we can't do that. We lose all our supplies. Okay, so just regular stance is fine. What is the notification? Missing three posts. We're saving it for either high level characters or unique characters. Sima Yi's coming, so Sima Yi needs to be up here, which means one of them needs to come down. It's probably Zhou Tai. He doesn't give a good bonus faction wide. So when Sumai gets into our faction, when he gets come, he's recalled already, we'll be able to add him in. Everyone else is a bit untouchable. Mm, nobody that we want. Yan Yu is ready dropped by quite a bit. We can save up points to try to get Yan Yu later. Let me even out a little bit. Another minus 10. Put him at 25. Maybe he's willing to become a turncoat. That's our only hope. There is nothing we can do in Little Bit's faction. I don't even know why we have him. We can see who's on the field. That's one advantage we have. We executed Guan Yu, by the way. It's just not possible to get him to join us, and we took the weapon, which we will hand out. Zorian's very unhappy. We tried our best here, but that might be the best we got. He's not willing to turn code on them. This might be her husband. So, if we can get him to flip, and if he's willing to join us, and we get a divorce, we can propose marriage afterward. Convoluted way to steal her, but best thing we can do. Um, this is fine. There's not much commerce here, but there is some. So I guess we could do a boost here. It doesn't hurt. Other boost is in Changsha and Dolan. That's correct. There's nothing we need to do there. They're all full build pretty much everywhere. We're waiting for Sapi to get fixed so we can start spamming stuff here. All right, I think we're good with 64k extra. Anyone close? Not really. All right, guess we can't do much. Not that we need it, but let's continue. Alrighty. Oh. 
Wait, do we have to peace out with him then? I think he's still going to be stuck in the Alliance War though. Ooh, what weapon? Silver, okay. I see a little bit. Okay, terrible army. We can sustain it. Is Sima Yi back? I need him in the position if he's back. He gives loot. Uh, we want reach. Welcome Sima Yi. Now, he will never have desire for higher office. Well, he has some, but we have so much plus, so he's not going to have any issues in our faction. Uh, weapon he can probably keep. This he doesn't need. Um, very administrative bonuses. That's fine. We want this boost right here. Plus 25 loot in own territory. It's a game changer. With this and Gorsa's bonus of plus 10, it's plus 35. So any bit of cunning... Like, this is a lot of cunning, 19. But if we have an army set up, you know, they will never be able to give away enough loot to uh, drop it in own friendly territory, which is pretty insane for share the uh, spoiled tactic. And we're going to do that, actually. You can take care of the household, since you are the husband. And uh, Samai is coming here. There we go. And he has all the skills that gives us extra trade route, too, so that would help. Although we probably lose one army limit until we get reach, and we also lose the redeployment discount. That's not a big deal. The 5% replenishment is also very helpful. And nothing else really helps well here. He can invade, capture, ambitious. We'll put him on the field for sure. We gotta find him a wife as well. Zhang Chunhua is gonna be a little mad. But um, I don't think he's married. Yep. So, we'll arrange one. A fellow strategist. An embezzler. Terrible, terrible, terrible character. So, she's willing to spy, and we're gonna send her out. That's the only useful thing about embezzlers. Like, the second they get summoned on the field, they are negative to the faction. So, divorce first, and then send her away. We can afford multiple divorces. Samayi's gonna be a picky guy. Divorce, not gonna affect the post. Why don't you? Well, it's a cooldown, man. We probably should have done it on her, and that were, that way he can. You know what? We're gonna tie her down with a with a marriage too, and then we're gonna send her away. Got a brute. Okay, not bad. So, what faction do we want to mess up the economy of? Oh, of course, Yuan Shao, our final enemy. Because Liu Bei is going to be the one who will get wiped first, so we don't need to do much there. He's going to have to shift points. Maybe even twice. And then wait for a build up, see what he can do afterward. Uh, just keep an eye out. There's nothing too interesting going on in Yuan Shao's faction. Too bad there's no vouching. That's something I recommended during the. Um, the Christmas specials, where if your spy can vouch for a newcomer so that he, she gets recruited, that'd be quite cool if it's a new action. But we're gonna do this. We do have a lot of points here, but what can we do? We're gonna try to hit a couple faction wide. See, the last one timed out. Hmm. What if we do interference first? The 24 obviously hurts but we can do this for free now and we can easily build it back up because he has such high gains here and here that we might actually be able to save enough points to do two sets of minus tens put him at like 15 and then maybe just maybe we can get him he has wavering loyalties because nobody's making him too happy John face back on the field that's good He's not using Zhao Yun or Zhuge Liang, which is a shame. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't have him do anything. 
Maybe I just disown him. Open up a slot. Why don't we do that? She just needs points. Alright, we're just gonna wait for points. A embezzler? Another embezzler? Willing to spy? Send her out, maybe. Uh, basically, the reason why embezzler is bad is look at it. The second they're standing in a commandery, the income of that commandery dropped by 15%. And if she's an administrator, 5% corruption. So basically, just summoning her onto the field, putting her on assignment, putting her as administrator just crushes economy. So we have no use for them. Mm, pointless. Pointless. Clerk. Nope. A burnt peacekeeper. Where are you from? Zhang Zi's faction in 206. So your faction got wiped. So he's not a spy. Welcome to the group. Alright. And of course, he would need a wife. Somehow you can't get married this turn, which is a shame. Another strategist. A rogue this time. What happened to all the, you know, our luck with sentinels? It's one and three. Yeah, there's a cooldown. Alright, we'll get that soon. Uh, building's good. She's gonna still defend here. If nobody wants to invade, we'll counterattack. Basically, we're not really strong enough to go on the offense with this army. It's very well suited for defense, though. We should still be at war with them because of how alliance wars, you know, it's kind of unpreventable even with the vassal situation. We do need to heal for a turn, so we're going to move here. Oh, Gao Shun. Gao Shun's working for Hua Xin? It's our shot. No one has patience. Hmm, that's a shame. Do you guys have good items? We have items. Well, this is a silver one here. But he has all the good ones. We don't have movement, do we? Oh, we have good movement. Okay, we can drag him in with... Oh, he we can't. He's it's not, it's not his city. Does she have good items? Shaman. Alright, she's first. Can we chase her? Please chase her down. Please chase her down. No, we can't. Hmm. Or oh, ambush. Maybe we can get them. We could probably also wipe them out. We have a food deal with them, which means we'll lose respect. But, um... Oh, we have... Right. Sumai gives us an extra trade agreement. Gongsun do 1.7. Okay. If it's free, we'll take it. Maybe he will pay us cash. Maybe 500. Nope, he's poor. He's only, he only has a thousand. Wow. Wow, why are you so poor? Like, he's so poor to the point, like, he makes fractions of what. He has fractions of what make a turn. Like, not even close. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. All right, we got this. Convert, pop, prep. We can spam buildings here to try to get her to level up, and then maybe we have flaming shot for the next battle. So we'll take the tribute hall, bump it up, bump it up. Oh, she leveled up already. She needs two more levels. Um, I, I guess he'll be bandit. It's not useful, but uh, we just want to keep building buildings. 
Place six more buildings. Three more? Yeah, perfect. So it's, it's not that expensive. 800 payment, a thousand, so 2,000 to rush, and then we get 300 back. About 1,500 per 1,000 experience. I think one more would do it. Yep, perfect. She leveled up. This is a good build. We don't need any more. Flaming shot. Awesome. And she got resiliency. Now we don't have a lot of movement, but we can take the farmland. And I think we just delegate this. Casualties low. Actually, why don't we make sure the casualties low? And we can take a look at our new units. Everyone's invincible. We want them to get experience here. We even want them to get experience. And these. Okay, so we want to fight this. Alright, of course the turn after we get Flaming Shot, it rains. Of course. I want them to get a ton of experience here, so I'm going to try to micro them. These guys don't need experience here, really, because they have plenty already. These three do so they're gonna to try to get some shots in all of them actually need experience so if they rush up we can counter rush them a little bit we have stock hmm stock and snipe too yeah we can give them stock and snipe I guess if anyone gets close this way but they're just gonna be like these this this unit's gonna go far far away like don't steal experience from everyone else they need it he could use some experience, so we could put him here. The generals should probably stay out of their way. Don't want to use, you know, gunning to take experience. He also doesn't need experience, so just hide over here. And mainly we're going to try to get kills with him right here. We're still using the fire. Uh, you can still light things on fire. You can also still do the explosion damage from this, so it's still beneficial, I think, especially against crowds. And in this tight choke, we should be able to get some kills. Actually, maybe we should do this, because the burn damage kills are not counted as experience kills, so we want to use the regular one. And we can afford to take a little casualty here on these units, because we um, have really high replenishment, so it doesn't really matter if we get hit. Like, the archers can hit us a little bit. We'll hopefully be able to wipe out kind of what their archer could do to us with our siege weapons. And just have these boys Just use these squares to block their movement. Alright, not bad. I mean, if they step into their range, that's their fault. Yeah, they might actually be trying to suicide here. They actually walked into the range. Okay, all right, fine. Oh, 
Let our units fight. They gotta get the experience somehow. There we go. It's a good shot. Not chase them into that group. Okay. You guys really need to move up to kill that unit. Wipe that out. They're just annoying this time. All routed. The tower is hitting us. Ooh, it's a nice wave. These are much better units uh, in terms of melees. So what we can do here? Snipe them a couple times. I don't think they're bracing. Oh, oh, friendly fire is a big issue though. Oh my god, big issue. Yeah, they braced a little bit in the front. A couple of them bumped into that. The rest should get the easy kill. What are they doing? When did I summon them? We should have won. There we go. Not about being pretty, it's about getting experience. Alrighty. I'm sure we'll be fully healed with Share the Spoils this turn, so not worried about the casualties here. Aim of Fortune is just going off the chart. We're going to also loot um, so that that way we can both get infamy build up as well as uh, give our administrators or underlings something to do to rank up. Uh, but it's still level 3, so it's even perfect even without it. And we do a conversion. Um, even with Share the Spoil now, it's going to be gaining. It's impossible to lose them now. Which is fine. We got the reforms coming up to give us plus 30% to combat the minus 25% in terms of movement. We should have about normal movement anyways, and this way we can always do share the spoils to heal at all times. I think we just stay put. Nothing to do here. Their job is also to keep things safe. Yuan Shao attacking Liu Bei by himself, that's okay, I guess. Not entirely against it, but I don't want him to take stuff that could be mine. Alright, so we're gonna attack. This one we're just gonna delegate. Not much to show here. A lot of casualties on the generals. This one's not level 4 yet. We're at the point where we just keep, gotta keep on fighting. I think we lose about 8 points of infamy a turn. 
Yeah, so we have to keep conquering and battling every single turn to keep our unbreakable and 100% diplomatic income from tributaries. If we can somehow get it to the next tier, which I think is 7... No, it's max 500, so it's probably a 400 point break. Once we get over 400, the decay goes way up, 16 points, but we get scare faction wide. So basically they drop 10 points of morale automatically, night battle another 15, and we're always unbreakable, another 50% to diplomatic values. It's just going to get out of hand. Uh, we're going to pop out. Do that, come back in. Uh, the loot's not it's not gonna drop. So the the, the, the military supplies is just not gonna drop. We're just gonna be going up. Alright, we can't attack this time. We can go to the Emperor's seat very soon, but first we're gonna start with Nayang. Pick it up. We're gonna have to start make vassals soon. Uh, we have to fight this. I don't want to take medium casualties. Alrighty, so here we are in another rainy siege. Um, obviously not perfect, but doable. They don't have much. Uh, this looks fine. And as I was saying, we gotta start making vassals soon because we are um, obviously using the rule, or the house rule, where we can only keep a commandery if we can put a underling in there and where we can't sustain that so we have to kind of take it away um i guess we won't do fire I'll crush these we'll try to use our range advantage now their units shouldn't have a lot of ammo because we do have a burn officer here that was easy now these aren't level one so they're going to be a little bit more accurate 53. Probably three volleys. This one gotta go too. Maybe we crush that one. Give us a little bit more breathing room in terms of where we put our units. Because we have the front door open already. We also have fire arrows to take the interior towers down, so it should be fine. Let me crush this one. At the end of the day, maybe Jodhai is going to get a cavalry army. Because we are going to unlock more cavalry options. Because it doesn't make sense for him to use these. At not as much sense. He just doesn't have a lot of cunning. Can they stay invisible? Because if they can, I would love for them to get some experience here. Because we don't outrange them, but if we can stay invisible, they can't really hit back. Oh, we don't have snipe. Oh, we do have snipe. Yeah, we do have snipe. So with no towers and anything on the wall, we should be able to sneak up. I'll let the poison do its work. I guess one unit would be fine, because it's just the poison damage will do its work. Everyone gets one volley. It's about 1k damage. Per, uh, let's just get the experience. Kill them. As long as we can stay invisible. A lot of barricades though, it's kind of annoying. They barricaded all of these... Like, I can't get in. Like, I can try to start a fire, but in the rain? Rather difficult. We probably have to loop this way. We don't have Undying Vow yet. Alright, no civilian has ruined our cover yet. We're through the gates. Shire! 
We're gonna run out of ammo, but we're gonna just dump it. Hmm. There's like no point to go toward that unit though, because we have to get through this way. And he's invisible. I'm not sure if he can stay invisible to capture a tower. So I'll just get here. I'm gonna move. They have experience, not low. You know what? We're gonna try. If we can burn down that barricade, you know, you can start. You can still start a fire in the range. It's more difficult. Ray hit. Alright, that's on fire. More than 50%. Try that one. Great hit. The fire is kind of spreading. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we can get the barricades or not. Oh, 54. That's a fire. We just need to get rid of this barricade, to be honest. 51% damage. Try to start a fire here. I mean, they can start fires. It's another option we can do. Okay, that's lit. Great. Now can we blow this one up? And then we have entry, you know, into that. You guys come back. We have a new way in. guys. Just a small fire would do. Or else we can just let them do it. It's just so hard in the rain. Or else we would have this whole place lit up already. I'm not sure. That tree looks like it's on fire, but I don't think the building is actually on fire. 33%. Oh, 65 here! Did this spread? 9%, 9%? I'm not sure. Alright, I'm gonna use you guys. Still 9%. Alright, get some fire arrows up there. Oh, it's spreading. We don't just shoot it anymore. Great. Oh wait, but it's not spreading fast enough. It's gonna die down before it gets that on fire. So we're gonna just shoot it a couple times. 25, 28.
All right, we did it. We did it. Assume a path will be opened here for the infantry to go through. Invisible infantry. I realize they can't actually go back to help. Because they, they are barricaded away. They have to go this way. Okay, they're sending cavalry to respond to us. Hmm, what's our solution against melee calves? We don't really have one. We don't really have one. Kill Tai, you're our solution against melee calves. Stay still. They're getting burned. It's okay. We can go back to invisible here. Turning around, maybe we have a shot. I'm gonna make sure they don't bounce back. You'll fight the spear guard. So will you. Oh, she went out. He went out and bounced back. Poison will debuff their melee attack rate. They can't. Oh, they see us. They see our cavalry. Okay, they don't see them. Charge. Flank them. Charge through, get into the plaza, win this game for us. Ow, generals. Yeah, it's a little too late for you guys to find out we're actually here. Break through their captains. Not the strongest in melee, but we'll flank with our generals. Nice, we got them. Got them. Stay on them. Overwhelm them. We'll capture this. Let the infantry get the experience. Oh, we got the win. Nice. Wasn't too bad. Alright, I think we kept the casualty low enough. Oh, 
Now there's a problem though, we can't really keep this according to our rule. And the jade mine's actually pretty good. 300 industry. So we might want to get rid of another one. Gonna pop out. Yeah, I don't know. Which one don't we want? Technically, Sapi is not that useful. I was hoping that our kids could come of age a little bit quicker. Like, they were still so far away from any of them taking over for their fathers. Like, maybe we can take, like, the husband of Lu Ji to take over Sapi. That might work. Or give Hao Meng, who betrayed Lu Bu here, to take over. Because I'm not really going to... I mean, he's not bad. He has Night Battle on him, which is rare for vanguards. And also speed for the whole army. Like, if the character's too good, I'm, like, not willing to part with them. Hmm. I guess we have to wait till next turn. And they're not as good. I don't feel like setting them up as a, a, a administrator that's granting independence. Well, she might be a great... choice, actually. Lin... Yeah, she's actually currently in somewhere. Where? I don't know, we can check here. Pengcheng. Do we need Pengcheng? Banditry income, 30 prestige. We don't need prestige anymore. I guess we don't need Pengcheng. I guess we could just grant her independence on the spot. And maybe even give her Sapi as well. It's worth 10 food to us. This is worth 13 food. We don't need it. Yeah, I guess. Why, why don't we? She, she'll be a good choice here. Because of the humble trait, I feel like I can depend on her not being a very demandy vassal after we let her go. Let's try it. Here. Take the independence. Ongchong and Devious Scoundrel. Wow. I wonder if this is always going to be the case for bandit characters. Like they're just not going to have good personalities. I can't trust her. But I don't mind her as our vassal. Because... She's going to pay us how much? A thousand? Okay, so this is basic tribute. This is like the vassal tribute. This is not our demand tribute. So it might be even better if I give her independence. Make her a small faction. And then she's going to love us. And then we ask for actual tribute. Why can't I grant her independence? I, I, I can't grant her independence. I don't want 20%. I want 35%. Okay, maybe she'll ask us for deep independence. That's weird, but okay. And now we can find an administrator for uh, Nanyang. Someone that can boost industry. We have a bunch of burn officers. Sima Yi would be a great choice, I think. But he's in our court already, so he can't really do it. He's our new guy with all sources. I think we pick him. We don't have any industry boosting characters. 
Right, so we're happy with that. Nobody coming. Right, nobody coming. Alright, everyone has moved. I think we did everything we can with the buildings. Yeah, I think we're good. Nothing needs to be converted. Yeah, we're at a good place. Well, let us continue. Alright, Liu Bei has five armies coming back. But they're all kind of depleted, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, they're trying to rescue their capital. We need to step on it. Do they both have reach? No, only Zhengjiang has reach right now. We'll trust the low. We have high replenishment. And it doesn't seem like Nobe has an army near his capital, because they're all trying to come back. Oh, Zhang Fei's here. Pleasantly surprised. Oh, he has the lodging building. But not the right version of the lodging, so we're going to convert. Yeah, we're going to convert. It's going to be better for us if we convert. I'm not going to keep that. I'm also not going to keep that. I care more about the marketplace. Not market. I, I care more about the, the industry income we can get here. Synergizing with this. We could go tall here. Because we need a private workshop still. And we still probably need... A bandit building. Hmm. Yeah, we could go tall. He's picking up levels. He was level 1. We just built a lot of buildings for him. So, why don't you pick up... Hmm. Not much. Not much he can really pick up to help us. But this is fine. Zhang Yang's also here. Fa Zheng. Okay, all historically noteworthy characters. But Liu Bei is going to lose his Emperor seat before he can recruit Imperial units. Did he recruit any here? One. Two. Okay. There's going to be an Imperial garrison inside. And there's always a military infrastructure in Xiangyang. So it's going to be tough. Actually, it's so tough that I don't think we have the army to do it. Help. Help. Help is needed. So, I heard Sima Yi is available for a burned officer that includes some of Cao Cao's unique unit. Oh, what a retinue. Wrong city, but that's fine. We'll bounce him down. Double burn officer. Kao Meng with the night battle plus extra speed, maybe? Like, he would bring us Night Battle and extra speed, but no reach. Sima Yi has no reach, has no Night Battle, has no Flaming Shot. And that's not good. He would give us extra money post-battle. He would lead, but also no reach. Okay, Jiang Lu would give us reach. <laughs> Put them in different armies. That's okay. Um, pop in. Pop in, merge. Have him lead. Crossbowman. We're probably going to lose. Do this. Lose the crossbowman. Get siege weapons. 
Not that one. Play keep the cavalry. Ooh, we can get a lot of interest in cavalry. The yellow turban ones. The upgraded version of these. This is going to be a... I mean, it's going to be a backup army. Right, so we're going to remember this is a backup army. So they're going to be assisting the other army. Therefore, maybe no siege weapons better. Because they'll never enter the battlefield in time. These are kind of like mini artilleries. They can do a lot of the same thing while taking a little bit of damage themselves. Maybe this is what we give him. So he's going to keep that cavalry, recruit the rest. The Burin trait is only going to help us debuff the enemy here. We're not going to take advantage of the burn trait. And the idea here is just we, we pump them here, get them ready, have them show up in the siege together. And that merge took care of a lot of the supply issues so they won't have movement issues. I'm going to switch this army up. We need something sturdy. Okay, so they're good. Nobody's not going to make it back in time. She's on march, but I can't reach her. Can I not attack you? Yeah, I cannot attack you. I'm going to trespass you, if that's okay. No. But we're just going to trespass you then. I'm trying to be polite and ask. Left me no choice. We can't get rid of it even if we want to try. We just can't get rid of it. Alright, regular stance then. Where is Lobe's armies? It's just not here, huh? Like, I should go here just to stop him. Is he gonna see, take this? He's on, yeah, he's on reach, so he can't uh, march, so he can't reach this. But I should cut him off with this army and then have him take this. Or have them meet up and take this. I don't want that because I don't have enough underlings. I think that makes sense. Let's, um. Yeah, the loot, the loot just excessive at this point, but we can't do much about that. He can't reach there even if he wants to. Can we, um... Split up, split up. Join back. No, they can't join back because I used up all their movements. What if we reach? There we go, that works. Mm, that works very well. Ah, uh, now their movement's gonna be fine. We could do the same thing here, but we don't need movement, we're good. They're still defending over here. I mean, against what, but still. Just in case. Just like, they're just gonna guard our capital just in case anyone makes a move. Farther down south, Gaoshun, right, we can try to capture it here. No one has um, patience. We didn't get... Oh, whoa, 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 right, we have so many good items. Who deserves them? Two good poem weapons. Two good poem weapons. So you're going to get the gold D and complete the fortress set? No, he doesn't have the other one, but he deserves that one. Zhou Tai is going to pick up Guan Yu's weapon. Yeah, I think that's good. And Zhang Lu will pick up something nice as well. That one's on cooldown. The spear is also... No, just that's on cooldown. 
But that's the one I kind of want to give him, so he's going to have to wait. Ganning has his own unique one. Jilin's going to pick up a nice one. And that's all the good ones we have on the field. I mean, he's technically on the field now. I'll give him that one when that comes off cooldown. Doesn't deserve this spear just yet. Alright, let's end with this battle here. Level 4. That's the best capture rate we can do, so let's see what we can do here. Not gonna be an easy fight. Yeah, we're not even giving the delegate win here, which is understandable because it's such a huge retinue. And Goldschwin's really no joke, but... But I think we can do it. Let's go. Alright, it doesn't matter if it rains or not. Um, we're going to try to take advantage of our Vanguard deployment to guide them into this like death trap if we can. They're just going to march straight at our generals, which is what I hope they do. We'll have Poison Shot to kind of slow them down. And then these without poison shot will just hide and do their damage. And then we'll have to like charge them up in the beginning. Into this box. Uh oh, uh oh. The box need to change shape. The box need to change shape. I might take that. We have a silver weapon, he does not. I want experience by asking him to duel us. We can do a nice poison volley, that would be great. Although their cavalry might chase us. We'll Wisdom the river right there. I don't have stock, so I can't... I guess I'll go that way, where the cavalry's not, so at least I don't get chased. Win. Don't lose. I'll give you some uh, charge resistance, which would not help you here, but... I can secretly move these guys... like, into position. And then unleash at like one moment. But we gotta stay away from this duel. Which I don't know if we'll win or not. But first we'll try to get a nice poison volley on her. We're losing. Maybe we should open up the angle a little bit better. I think I only got like three units. Maybe four. Four units. Okay. Not terrible. Wow, oh, we are losing. Ha! Mm. Yeah, we're losing. How are we losing? Oh, 70% armor. We also have 70. 48%. Yeah, 48% evasion. Okay. A lot more units this time. We also have Scare. Here, Tilly, you can run. Yeah, 
I mean, we're all unbreakable, so it's not like we're going to lose anything by fighting him. But we don't have a good weapon. Oh, fire, fire, fire. That's a great poison volley area. Clyde, because we have some unfinished business here with the poison volley. Fire! Perfect, perfect shot. Alright, they're also firing. They don't see us yet. Charge, charge, charge. Cly. Go get them, boys. And there's another group shooting them from behind. Close in on them. It's all about the scare. Close in on them. Use our generals to chase down the enemy range units. Let's focus down the general. Nobody runs away. Don't show good effort, but you can't turn the tide here. Oh, he disappeared. That's it. That's the win. Not bad. Yeah, when the whole army is unbreakable, Gaoshun is not going to be able to kill 2,000 men by himself. So much money post-battle loot, the multipliers. You see how we made 4,000 in there? Usually you make like 200, but we have so many of the tributary buildings that's boosting post-battle loot. It's nuts. Like the win, some extra experience. Huaxin destroyed, going to join and take care of the Yellow Turban Rebels as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue our push down south, uh, wipe out this group, and then I think we'll regroup with Lu Bu's army. We might kill Xu Gong after our payment is done, or we can shift our attention farther. No, I like to have Shi Xie and uh, Wang Long kind of shield us from the Naman factions, but we're going to probably pop into the river if we can. We might buy some of these land because we can still deal with Sun Tzu pretty easily. And then we're just going to launch our assault maybe down river. Liu Bei owns all of this in Badung as well as the rest of this. We can't do the abdicate, so we have to eventually wipe them out. We could peace out after the Emperor seat. Now, because we're going pretty smoothly here, we're... Wait, 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 who owns that? Yellow Turban owns that. Huh. We might have an opening to take the rest of Luoyang too. Uh, but the point being, does he have items? I'm just curious. Uh, the point being, we need 95 counties as well. That's another requirement that we have to take into consideration because everything is going so smoothly at this point that we're not going to have 95 when we have all of three Emperor seat. We only have 32 right now. Like we're really far behind in that front. We have one vassal, so 34. And even let's say we absorb all of Liu Bei's and maybe all of his, I think we're still short of 95. So we gotta take more land and either keep it or give it to vassals. We only have 
seven underling positions. We might be able to get one more from Reform. I'm not sure. I have to take a look at another time. But regardless, we can't keep everything. So we're going to have to pick and choose and uh, pick the big commanderies, the one with multiple counties, and work our way from there. We're going to get some more movement next turn. And we're probably going to pick up the rest of these cavalry units. There's a bunch of really good cavalry units around. And then after we're done there, we're going to maybe play around with some of them. Corruption's definitely needed. We probably want all the purple ones. We want to decrease all the corruption we can get. Uh, minus 5% here, minus 5% here, another minus 5% here. Because as we expand that corruption, it's going to eat into our taxation income, which doesn't really matter. <laughs> We're making 18k, so we're still making a bunch from taxation. We're just making a bunch more from diplomacy. So yeah, that's where things stand. We're rich, we're making a push, Liu Bei's not doing much to stand in our way, and Yuan Shao can't do anything to backstab us because we have the mercenary contract keeping us safe from that front. So things looking great, um, and uh, we'll continue from here next time. Until then, bye!